cannot think of any need in childhood as strong as the need for a father's protection, said Sigmund Freud, Austrian neurologist and founder of psychoanalysis. But yet, society seems to have lost this value for the need for fathers. The UK, along with Ireland, has the worst statistics in family breakdown in the entire European Union. Approximately 2.9 million children in the UK have no meaningful contact with their father. 76% of young men in prison in England and Wales had absent fathers. Fatherless daughters are twice as likely to have had sexual intercourse and seven times more likely to have been pregnant by age 17 when compared to relative to girls whose fathers were present during their early development. Hey, I hope you're all well. How's your week going? I'm Christine Grace and welcome back to my series, Debunking the Lunacy. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the current state of the family unit. I personally view family as the nucleus of all society and it is my observation that there's a correlation between the state of families and the state of broader society. The unity of mothers and fathers within the home is essential to child development, much like how the sun and the moon are both equally important to ensuring life here on earth. The mother and the father are both equally important for ensuring children have the best advantages of becoming healthy, competent adults equipped with all the necessary capabilities in order to survive out in the real world. The problem we are facing is that 65% of children aged 12 to 16 in low-income households do not live with both parents. The majority of these households, 92%, are headed by a single mother. The Centre for Social Justice in 2013 found that a child sitting their GCSEs is more likely to own a smartphone than to be living at home with their father. And that was 10 years years ago. With the exponential increase in divorce rates, even over the last 10 years, the case is bound to be more horrific today. Sadly, the rise in fatherless homes is exacerbated by a decline in traditional male communities and male role models which have historically offered an alternative for fatherless boys. Not only are male teachers becoming a rarity, but modern careers no longer offer a means for boys to work alongside men. Only 14% of primary school teachers are male. I'll dig way more into this in the next episode and why this presents a problem. I think this speaks to a wider problem. If men have no role models or fathers around when growing up, is it any shock that they're incompetent and leaving when becoming fathers themselves? Not that this is the only factor either, but it definitely is a component. Don't worry, I'm definitely going to get into the others too. Children with single, separated or step parents are 50% more likely to fail at school. Clearly, we have a problem here and it's getting worse year on year. There is evidently a lack of value systems or at the very least, the value systems that individuals currently have are distorted. Value systems tend to be passed down through families and if we have an increase of broken families, it makes sense that people are creating their own individual value systems that ultimately place their own happiness and validation over what is actually statistically and scientifically proven to benefit children. Children with both mother and father in the home are emotionally, educationally, socially and behaviourally more prominent. This issue is so multi-dimensional and so complex it's vital we all take accountability, both men and women. No more passing blame, we just need to acknowledge the facts and the current state of the situation. It's only through unity of the sexes that we will ever solve this problem. I think the understanding of the importance of fathers has been lost or at least undervalued in our society. We need fathers. It's the role of the father to engage to equip, to encourage and to enlighten children. The role of the father plays an indispensable role in the development of the psyche in both girls and boys and thus affecting future decision making and behaviours. In Union psychology, the animus refers to the archetype of the masculine within the psyche. Jung refers to the animus as the unconscious masculine within a woman's psyche, but upon correspondence with Eric Neumann, it was discovered that Consciousness utilizes the masculine element of the psyche in both men and women, manifesting through traits such as aggressiveness, competitiveness, logical and rational thinking, control, stoicism, independence, self-reliance, leadership and dominance. It's no surprise that the archetype of the good father can be seen as the wise king or the warrior, which Dr. Jordan Peterson interestingly points out is the archetype that universities often teach students the narrative to tear this archetype down. I'm going to delve well into this in the next episode, so stay tuned. But could this also be a contributing component to the problem of fatherlessness? It definitely seems to me that there is sufficient evidence to suggest this. The bad father archetype is a tyrant. He is the king that devours his own son, the tyrannical father. Similarly, in women, the good mother is the one who allows her child to grow up. She allows the child to take on the adventures of the world despite how dangerous the world can be. And the bad mother is the devouring mother, the overprotective mother. She wants the child to remain infantile, weak, 
dependent upon her. The archetype of the devouring mother is prominent across all society. I see a correlation with the increase of single mothers and the destruction of masculinity in our culture. It seems the mainstream media has embodied the archetype of the devouring mother that seeks to rob all men of all good masculine qualities that could give us wise men and warriors. I want to clarify I am in no way taking away from the burden upon single mothers to try and raise children without a father present, but I am also acknowledging that there are wider societal problems that must be addressed. Women do petition for 62% of divorces in the UK, and women are favoured in doing so as 95% of all custody in the UK goes to mothers, despite the fact that children raised by single fathers actually do better than children raised by single mothers. Luckily there are organisations that are tackling this wider issue, such as Fatherless Britain, although they're very small groups. They stand to seek answers as to why men are seemingly treated as second class citizens when compared to women, especially within family law. I fear that these organisations don't get the support or coverage that they deserve. Growing up without a father permanently alters the structure of the brain. It produces more children who are aggressive and angry. Children brought up by only a single mother have a higher risk of developing deviant behaviour, including drug abuse. I find it really intriguing that the top complaints I hear from both genders can be linked to this problem that we have of a fatherless society. This is why I'm convinced that if we can fix the nucleus, the family unit, as best we can, perhaps everything else will slowly but surely improve also. As above, so below. Both complaints of valid and can be observed. Women complain modern men are incompetent and men complain that modern women are promiscuous. Fatherless girls are more likely to grow up to be promiscuous women and fatherless boys are more likely to grow up to become incompetent men. And therefore, we produce unhealthy relationships that ultimately fail, and we end up producing more single parent homes. It's a never ending toxic cycle. We know fatherlessness can manifest in different ways, including emotional, physical, and financial absence. Children without fathers are more likely to suffer from depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, and behavioural problems. Paternal investment theory provides fatherless girls display a host of outcomes often experienced by early developing girls, including increased sexual promiscuity, higher rates of teen pregnancy, earlier first sexual intercourse and reproduction, and difficulty forming stable, long-term relationships. It's no secret and can definitely be observed that fatherless girls struggle to pick good mates. They tend to go for avoidant and unavailable men, ultimately recreating the pattern of their absent fathers because the brain only has an absent father as a template for relationships with males. Dr. Steve Perry famously said on Oprah's life class, promiscuity is a form of self-mutilation for daddyless daughters. It's rarely seen as self-mutilation, but that's exactly what it is. Often we look at young girls who are dealing with pain, we think of self-mutilation as the cutting. That too, but promiscuity is self-mutilation. It's the self-mutilation of allowing someone to physically enter you. What's worrying is that Dr. Perry observed young girls girls don't even necessarily like the guys that much. He says on the show, I'm like, why did you do that? You don't even like the guy. And they just don't know. Dr. Perry says that he's heard the justifications are typically, he was nice to me. And he explains, what a father or a very important father figure does for the young ladies with whom I work with is it sets the standards. This makes a lot of sense when we know that fatherless children are often way more insecure. Eating disorder expert Margot D. Main used the concept of father hunger in her book, Fathers, Daughters and Food. She concluded that such father hunger as prompted by paternal absence may leave a daughter with an unhealthy kind of narcissism with a prevalent search for external sources of self-esteem. She further examined the longing that all children have for connection with fathers and how an unmet father hunger influences disordered eating and other mental illnesses. Again, this is a common complaint from men that modern women are very narcissistic and it makes a lot of sense and can be observed almost everywhere on social media. For fatherless boys, the lack of a positive father figure can make it challenging for sons to develop a strong sense of self-worth and positive self-concepts which can lead to low self-esteem and other psychological issues. We know fatherless boys are three times more likely to experience depression than those with fathers present. Additional research has revealed that boys without fathers are more likely to display externalizing behaviors such as aggression, delinquency, and hyperactivity. Fatherless boys are more likely to become involved in crime, become criminally or sexually exploited, carry weapons, to show violence, and to associate with gangs and other criminal groups. We previously mentioned Eric Neumann. Neumann developed upon Jung's concept of the father complex to explore the father-son relationship and its implications for issues of authority, noting on the one hand how a premature identification with the father
father, foreclosing the generational struggle, could lead to a thoughtless conservatism. Whereas on the other hand, the rebel against the father complex is found in the archetype of the eternal son. Or as Jordan Peterson refers to it, the Peter Pan, boy who never grows up. How can men become good fathers when they've never seen a good example? There is not one side that is more responsible than the other. This is a cultural issue that both genders need to want to fix. We need to want the family unit. We need to want long-term, preferably monogamous relationships. We need to want to do better as a unit for our children instead of point scoring and competing. Whilst researching for this video, coming across the statistic that GCSE kids are more likely to own a smartphone than have a father really shocked me. I knew it was bad, but this particular statistic really struck me. I spoke to my colleagues about how in school I noticed that the majority of my classmates tended to just live with their mums. My colleagues all went to school in different areas around the world and for them the experience was very different. It's become increasingly clear to me that the fatherless society is a very westernized problem. I think another reason with the distortion of value systems is because people now value money over family. Growing up without one or both biological parents constitutes an adverse childhood event. An adverse childhood event is defined as a highly stressful and potentially traumatic event or situation that occurs during childhood and or adolescence. Now most people would argue that having one biological parent traumatic or particularly highly stressful but it constitutes an adverse childhood event. This can be a single event or a prolonged threat to or breach of a young person's safety, security, trust or bodily integrity. Adverse childhood events have a direct link to adult health and life expectancy. Nearly half of all people living in England have experienced at least one adverse childhood event and looking at the statistics, it would not surprise me if it was that they grew up without a father. Look, this isn't going to change overnight. We need a complete restructuring in our value systems here in the West and unfortunately the values that promote a family unit are seemingly unheard of in the modern day and age. I think a start could at least be suitable substitutes for the absent fathers, better male role models, more masculine men being praised in society instead of torn down, more men within our institutions for children to turn to and look up to as father figures for guidance. We can't expect men to just become good fathers when they have no template to follow. We can't just expect women to make better choices when they've had no father figure to teach them boundaries, give them self-esteem. We need to stop incentivizing women to initiate divorce and we need to start presenting more nuclear families in the mainstream. So at least there's a standard template for people to look towards. But most importantly, this all boils down to selfishness. We need to stop placing our happiness as the pinnacle of our hierarchies of importance. Happiness is a temporary feeling, as all feelings are temporary. Life is full of ups and downs, but the problem is, is that no one has the perseverance anymore to stick around and stick by each other through the lows. Everyone's too quick to tap out. We've become weak-minded. We've been fed the lie that life is supposed to be happy. No, life is bloody hard and that's why moments of joy are so sacred. Life is tough and the only way to bear the load of the burden is by spreading it among more shoulders together because ultimately no one's happy. You can argue the benefit of divorce and separation all you want but look at the statistics for happiness in the UK. As divorce goes up, happiness is coming down. No one's happy. So why continue to do this whole life thing alone? You can do it together as a family and no family is perfect. And that is something that our children will thank us for. I shall thank my parents for it. I apologize for the rather dismal episode today, but the whole point of debunking the lunacy is to reflect the sides of society that the mainstream doesn't address. Not enough people are addressing this huge issue. It's depressing, I know, but it's absolutely necessary that we address it. We need to talk about it more. We need to make divorce taboo again. And like I said, we need to stop incentivizing parental separation. It's all good and well incentivizing marriage through marriage tax, but what good does it do if there is just as many, if not more incentives to get divorced? Let me know in the comments below your thoughts and what are your experiences? More importantly, where are you from? I can only speak from here in the United Kingdom and this is the state of it here. But what about where you are? If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up on your way out and why not share it with someone? Please subscribe to my channel to ensure that you do not miss any other videos and to stay up to date on this series. But most importantly, let's try our best to remain harmonious in the adversity of opinion. And I shall see you in the next one.